What up, ladies and gentlemen? Jesse Warden here. In our last video, we talked about mocking your dependencies in unit test utilizing Lodash's partial. The common actual public use cases or libraries or modules that it imports, you can go ahead and prepackage them in there so people who want to use your functions already get it in there. But for unit test, it makes it very easy to supply mocks because you pass it in as a function parameter as you can see here. And that's great from a testing perspective, but JavaScript already has some of this actually built in. It's called default parameters. They kind of act like partially applied functions in that they have default values if you supply nothing. Partial doesn't give you the option. It's always going to be there. But in the case of default values, it kind of serves the same function because you can call a function and if you don't supply something, aka intentionally give it undefined, such as up here, it'll automatically give you that. So let's give you an example. So we'll go to our node sandbox and we'll get rid of all this. And we'll call same name with nothing. And it prints out hello, undefined, undefined, because the two parameters of first name and last name have no values. So they basically default to undefined. Let's change first name here to default to Jesse. So we do that by defining this equals and Jesse. So this doesn't mean that first name equals Jesse. It only turns into that if you pass in nothing or undefined, which is effectively the same thing. So we're going to pass in nothing, rerun it, and now you can compare it to the first one. It says, hello, Jesse undefined. And we can do the same thing with the last name. Hit save. And now when you run it, it defaults to hello, Jesse Warden, but you could change it to moo, go all lowercase, rerun it, and it takes those values instead. If you don't provide something, it'll give you something. Same thing where we provided a first value for the first parameter, but nothing for the second, and it'll default to move warden because it uses the default value. So if you imagine that if I provide nothing, that the default behavior of a regular old JavaScript is actually this. It'll default these values to undefined because it assumes you didn't pass anything. So this is normally how JavaScript works. Well, going back to our function partial example, we can do the same thing instead of our get weather, where instead of using this partial, we can actually have get weather automatically equal the request module. You'll notice that we automatically default it there. So when get weather is called with nothing, right, as the first parameter will do that. Now here's the issue is that they're gonna provide probably something as the first parameter. There's no easy way to optionally do that. So we're gonna put this to the right over here. And we're gonna say the default for request function is the request module that we've imported up here. So we've imported it. That's our public module that we don't want to actually expose, but we want to be able to easily mock without having to use Sheenon or some other mutation way of doing things. So we'll put it to the right here and we'll get rid of this partial and we'll change it back to just good old get weather. So get weather function, you call it with a city and state. And if you don't provide a third parameter, it'll automatically use the default built-in request module. So we'll change this to just export that one method. A lot simpler, one method. Now, and we don't even need Lodash for that. Now, when we go into get weather, instead of importing the private method or the underscore version, what we consider private, which I think the new standard is actually gonna be pound, which is kind of weird, but we'll get rid of that. When we go to get weather, we can actually put the mock request at the end here. We can rerun our unit test, and it still works, runs our mock, and we can turn off wireless and guarantee that it still works and it's using our mock, right? Our mock request up here. And all we did was just say, look, if you provide a third parameter, it's an optional, then you can get the mock request. You can put whatever request object you want in there. For a unit test, this is very, very valuable. Everyone else who's gonna use this library for real is probably just gonna do this. Supply the same state. The default parameters, although they often go to the right instead of the left, you can put them in any order. Newer browsers used to get mad that you had parameters, then optionals, and then parameters after optionals. Now they don't care. So modern browsers are fine with it. So some parameters can be optional, some cannot. But they kind of fulfill the partial way of working where it has a default value. But you don't have to do low dash partial. You just use standard JavaScript that's built in. You default it to a regular thing. The only difference is you kind of put these things to the right, which is you know, it goes against a lot of the functional programming where they put that stuff to the left. That is how you use default parameters in JavaScript to mock your dependencies for unit testing.